Good evening. Welcome to Facebook Live uh, for Messy Church here. Um, I am just going to keep talking a little bit whilst um, a few people arrive. Um, it's uh, just eight o'clock. Um, it's um, just o'clock before eight o'clock in the UK, I should say. So you may be checking in from different parts of the world. Um, it will be good morning, uh, good afternoon um, to all of you. So um, if you're out there, um, do uh, do stick something in, in the chat um, to let us know where you're tuning in from um, and uh, what the time is uh, where you are. Welcome to you all. Um, it is good to see you. Um, I'm just going to um, introduce myself um, as uh, as people are arriving and as, as we're getting started. Um, my name's Kate Williams. Um, I am in Gloucester in the UK, which is um, towards the, the, the west. Or you go a little bit further and you find yourself in, in Wales. Um, and as I say, it's eight o'clock this evening um, and um, I work for Gloucester Anglican Diocese, uh, which is roughly Gloucestershire. Um, but some wiggly boundaries that don't match the uh, the county boundary um, and work as environmental um, engagement officer for the diocese. Also working with Messy Church on Messy Church Goes Wild, which is all about Messy Church going outdoors um, and getting stuck in with nature and uh, creation. So um, I do a lot with Forest Church as well. So it's, it's kind of that... Uh, that meeting place between uh, between Forest Church and Messy Church. Uh, very good to see the comments. It's uh, it's very reassuring to know that I'm not talking to uh, uh, to talking to myself. Um, so people checking in from Sweden, Cornwall, South Africa, um, Newton Aycliff, um, and um, possibly more. Um, so that's what I can see on my screen at the moment. Is, is uh, um, so that's that's all good. So um, I think I'm going to. Um, get started other people might join us as we go along um, and i know that these videos get watched back after the time as well so i am going to be talking about nature creation um environment um the mess we find ourselves in the wrong kind of mess and messy church is all about the right kind of mess isn't it um but we're we're in the wrong kind of mess in terms of our relationship to the natural world um and so there are some good possibilities about setting ourselves right um in ways which are good good mess the right kind of mess and getting ourselves outside and um and muddy um and in you know, engaging with, with all, all the goodness that God um, has, has given to us, uh, reconnecting with the world, uh, the gift that God has given to us. Um, and then that begins to set us on the right path in terms of um, environmental uh, crises that are in front of us right now. So uh, I'm going to talk in, in three parts, really. Um, I'm going to start off talking about um, the the wider society, the stuff that's going on around us, um, the crises I've always, already beginning to talk about a little bit um, and some ways that this environmental um, charities um, and, and people that are working on these things are helping us to engage and to get stuck in. I'm going to talk a little bit about Christian faith um, and nature and, and why why this is really important to us as Christians. I wonder why we don't talk about it more um, but um, but but we do it, it's there throughout the bible in so many ways so i'm going to talk a little, little bit about that um, and then i'm going to talk about how getting outdoors can connect us with our faith um, talking through what i found on my walk yesterday afternoon and just some reflections uh, from getting outside in nature uh, with god um, and um, uh, and how, how that can, can support and deepen our, our, our faith and our discipleship and our relationship with with God. Um, so I'm just reading the comments there. Um, bit bit cold to have Messy Church out, outdoors in northern Sweden at the moment, minus 20. Um, yeah, um, <laughs> I, I guess each of us in, in our own place needs to work out how to how to do it um, in, in our own environment. The UK, um, it's not so cold, but um, but we do have an awful lot of that wet stuff coming out of the sky where we are. So we have to think through how, how we uh, how we work things out in practical ways. Um, so, um, yeah, it's really good to get outdoors whenever we possibly can. But we do need to, to think through the practicalities. Um, 
in sensible and safe ways. So um, I'm going to start with with uh, with prayer. Um, and um, when I did this this morning, I could look out of my window and see uh, see nature staring staring back at me. It's it's evening now. It's it's uh, it's dark. My curtains are closed. So um, so I'm just going to um, close my eyes and uh, and we'll pray. So just to pause for a moment and remind ourselves of the goodness of God's gift to us in creation. The trees, the birds, the water that we may not appreciate when it's raining on our heads, but we need the stuff of life. The coming forth of springtime, the dying back in the autumn, the turning of the seasons and God in and through all of that. So we give you thanks, Lord God. We pray that you will be with us as we gather your goodness, uh, consider your goodness to us. And pray that you will guide our footsteps that we may walk gently on your earth. In Jesus' name. Amen. So I said I'd start um, by talking about some things going on in wider society. Um, the, um, the, the environmental crises will not have escaped your attention, and um, particularly with COP26. Uh, very, very recently. Um, for us in the UK, it's been on our, on our doorstep. Um, but of course, the COP uh, conferences happen every year. Um, so we, we watch them as they, as they um, continue year by year around the world. Um, and we pray for our politicians um, that they will make the serious commitments needed um, to get us back on track um, in terms of the destruction that, that, uh, that some of our actions have, have made to the, um, to the world and to the environment. We are warming up um, that um, what the one degree that we, we're, we're at at the moment may not seem very much, but actually it has serious consequences um, for, for nature um, and also for the world's poor. Um, the, the consequences are already serious um, in uh, in, in places of parts of the world where um, where, where the world's poor are living, uh, they're, they're suffering the consequences. Um, that there was a, a, a video, um, a, vid a, a Zoom conversation between uh, my own Bishop Robert um, here, here in Gloucester, the, the, the assistant bishop here in, in Gloucester, and um, Bishop of Tanzania. Um, and the Bishop of Tanzania was telling us about the consequences for his people uh, of climate change um, and the suffering. Um, and famine, death, uh, it, it's serious um, for the world's poor. Um, it's also coming to our own doorsteps as we're seeing um, in, the, in the Western world, as we're seeing more extreme weather um, and flooding um, and wildfires um, and all sorts of stuff. So the, the small one degree that may not seem all that important is actually really quite serious. Um, and we need to do everything that we can to get ourselves back on track um, as fast as we possibly can. Um, but telling us all that we are um, that we have a crisis on our hands and we're doing everything wrong um, isn't actually a good one for helping us get it right um, because most of us when we hear that kind of stuff we um, we just put our defenses up and we don't know <laughs> we don't know what to do um, and it's all too much and we feel too insignificant and we stick our fingers in the in our ears and we go la 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 la, la and I just don't know what to do and we, we it, it, it Knowing that there's a problem actually doesn't help us to, to get unstuck um, and to, to, to find our way forward. Um, what does help us is getting out in nature and noticing and connecting um, and, and actually falling in love with creation. Because uh, the more that we fall in love with, with creation, uh, the more that we're actually inclined to, uh, to do what's needed um, in, in order to set things right um, in terms of um, in terms of our relationship with the natural world, with, with creation, this is all around us. Um, so step one, get ourselves outdoors, notice, appreciate, give thanks to God, um, and then see where that takes us. Um, and there's something really, really good and right about putting love at the center. Um, you know, our, we, we, we believe in, and we, we worship a God of love. Um, 
and we live that in our relationship with with um, the people around us we we uh, we want that to overflow in um, in how we treat people um, we we need that to also overflow in terms of how we how we treat a tree um, and how we treat the grass under our feet and and the worms and even the slugs and the slugs and the snails and the less beautiful um, and, and less celebrated bits of God's creation um, that actually that love overflowing from the heart of God um, comes out in our our relationship um, with wider creation so that that movement from telling us that there's a problem to encouraging connection and engagement is something that's been happening around us in um, in the wildlife charities uh, because they have realized that dynamic that, that getting us getting us feeling guilty doesn't actually set us free um, and again we know that as Christians don't we that that feeling guilty we just get stuck we need God to set us free from guilt and then we can take the next step forward in in positive um, and life-giving ways so talking about the problem we need to understand so we need to understand it a bit but the wildlife charities have been really prioritizing connection reconnecting uh, with with God's creation um, and and I, I say God's creation there that not everybody will acknowledge that it's God's creation of course but but reconnecting with with nature so there's been a lot of work I've, uh, I've got a few things with me so I've got this this book here we go Last Child in the Woods uh, by a guy called Richard Liu, which is a really interesting read for those of you that uh, that find reading um, helpful for you. And he's talking about how over the last 50, 60 years, um, our children have become more and more disconnected from nature um, because lives have changed and we don't uh, we don't let our children ru run free and in the way that we we used to um, some of it for very good reasons because uh, we want to keep them safe but actually the, the the consequence of that is that they're becoming disconnected they're not um, they're not going out and damming a stream or climbing a tree unsupervised um, or den building or all of those things that uh, that children used to do. Um, in the past, um, their their lives are much more regimented, and uh, and as a consequence, much less connected uh, with the natural world. Um, and that has a knock on effect because it means that we don't understand it, we don't love it, um, we don't really realise where our food is coming from, um, except for the supermarkets. But that that connection that is there between uh, um, between between our everyday lives, our daily bread. Um, and um, and the well-being of creation, um, we, we've lost that, and we don't realise it because it's 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 not staring us in the face. We're not seeing life and growth and the seasons and the cycles, and, and just kind of living that in a in a natural way um, through through our play, through through the, our children's play. So um, so Richard Louvre talks about um, nature deficit disorder, um, and uh, the idea there is is that when we're disconnected from nature it's actually not good for us it's there, there are all sorts of, of consequences for our well-being um, and so there's lots of environmental charities talking about our well-being and reconnection and and how how that helps our mental health um, how that helps um, uh, how that helps our healing in in all kinds of ways so nature deficit disorder um, and reconnection the importance of of reconnection um, and I'll come on, on, along in a little bit to, to talk a bit more explicitly about how that connects with our Christian understanding um, as God has created all that God has made um, and people and God, you know, there's that, that sense of interconnection which runs all the way through the Old Testament. So environmental charities have been getting us outside. Um, I've brought here um, the, this is from the, um, a charity in, in the UK called the National Trust, um, my adventure notebook, and this is 50 things to do before you are 11 and three quarters. And we have things in here like play in the snow, make a daisy chain, skim a stone, run around in the rain. What else do we have? Explore a cave, hold a scary beast. Uh, what else? Make a grass trumpet, hunt for fossils and bones. So all kinds of outdoor stuff that gets us out and connected um, and uh, and resets our relationship with, with nature. Just those ordinary childhood play in nature resets our, our relationship with the natural world. So 
as Christians, I've talked a little bit already just as I'm going on about, about how this connects with our, our understanding of faith and rooting everything in love and being set free from guilt um, and, and that being the, what is needed in order for us to, to live well um, and in, in good and healthy ways with God, with, with uh, creation around us. Um, the Bible, of course, starts with, um, uh, with creation. Um, the, uh, the Bible ends with, with, um, with, with a, a, a city, the new heaven and the new earth, um, but with that river that run, that's running through and the trees by the side of the river and the, the, the leaves of the tree for the, the healing of, of the nation. Um, it's, it's a beautiful vision of, of interconnection between people and the human landscape and the natural world, kind of all living in harmony um, together. So if we run through the Old Testament very, very briefly, um, there's a sense of, of the well-being of the land and being connected with the well-being of the people, which we tend to miss because those of us in Western nations are coming with with urban eyes. Even if we're living in a village, uh, our, our nations have have urban eyes as we as we read the Bible. Um, and so we miss some of this stuff. We need to uh, need people to point it out to us quite often. But the well-being of the land is connected to the well-being of the people. Sabbath for the land as well as Sabbath for the people. Um, all creation praises. Um, it's, it's not just the people that are, that are giving, giving thanks and praise to God, but all creation praises, um, particularly in the, the nature psalms. Job 12. Ask the animals and they will teach you. Which of these does not know that the Lord has done this? Um, so that's a, a, a favourite of, of mine and, and for, for for worship outdoors, it's so key because there's that sense that we go outdoors in nature and nature teaches us of the things of God. We, we learn from nature as we might learn from one another um, and together we praise. Jesus was um, obviously very connected with nature. It comes out in his teaching so much uh, with seeds um, and, and growth and harvest um, and the vine in the vineyards that have been grafted on, onto the vine. Um, the um, the sheep, you know, anim animals sneak in there as well, um, and the shepherd looking after the sheep. Um, that that relationship between um, uh, between the people and the natural world comes out in in, in Jesus' teaching in so so many ways. Um, and of course, he often goes to pray in quiet spaces um, outdoors. Um, and one more thing that I'd, I'd like to point out whilst we're doing a, a little skip through the Bible is um, Colossians 1. Um, and I'm actually going to read in full Colossians 1, 19 to 20. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of the cross. And that's just so important as a reminder that um, that the work of the cross, which is so central to our faith as Christians, is um, is not just for for individual um, human beings, but um, but the whole of creation is redeemed through the work of the of the cross. Um, all things reconciled to Himself on earth and heaven through the blood of the cross. So. A reminder that when we are talking about caring for God's creation, this is right at the heart um, of our faith um, in ways that have, have really got lost and forgotten in, in recent um, decades within Christianity. Um, but not, not lost and forgotten in the whole of our 2000 years history. It's just the last, the last couple of hundred years maybe as we've become urbanised, we've forgotten and we really, really need to sort ourselves out and get back on track with this one, remind ourselves how much creation and nature is a part of our faith. So I said I would talk through um, my, my walk um, yesterday afternoon um, and I picked up a few things whilst I was out on my walk. I'm, I'm going to talk you through some things that I found and, uh, and what I did was, was really simple. I just went for a walk um, and uh, I went for a walk prayerfully inviting God to, to be with me. Um, and uh, in inviting um in inviting god to to perhaps point out to me um the things that that i could learn um that that could um that that connect with faith um, that i could share with you um this morning and and this evening so i uh, have some leaves i'm going to start off with these um so here we go there that is fabulous magnificent red and yellow 
little one here um, another one red we have a, a yellow uh, there we go and a green so I found myself reflecting on God's delight in colour and variety um, the uh, we, we talk we talk of God as creator and, and perhaps don't always stop and think about what that means um, but as as creator color variety texture um, shape all of these things um, and it's in in those particular leaves that the, the colors were so vibrant with um, the, the autumn that we're experiencing here in the UK at the moment um, God's delight in colour and variety and that 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 depth of creativity um, that is at the heart of who God is. And none of these leaves that I've shown to you are perfect. It leaves me questioning actually what what even is perfect? <laughs> what what even is perfect? Um, you know, there there's there's damaged edges and, and kind of a little bit of battering. Um, but no less beautiful for it, um, and and that's us in in life quite quite often, isn't it? That we we find ourselves a, a bit battered uh, by life um, in in this this way and that, and God looks at each of us, and we are beautiful um, as you know as we can look at these leaves and see the beauty, even though they're, they're a little bit battered around the edges in in various ways. Still, there is beauty. Um, and the heart of God for uh, for each of us and for all of creation doesn't need that kind of perfection, but can see the beauty um, that we are. So what else did I find? Um, I picked up a few different, oh, hang on, I'm gonna come back to my different leaves in a minute. Um, those, those leaves that I showed you, they, they were the bright colors. They, that, that, that was the, the, the tree that stands out in my local park for its colors. Um, I've got some much more ordinary leaves here. Um, I don't know if you can see that. It's just a very ordinary brown. Um, nothing particularly special about it. Um, actually, really good for crunching. The, the, these are, if you're out with your kids, these are good ones to crunch through. Um, it's a it's a lime tree, and uh, I found myself reflecting about the, the gift of the ordinary. Um, that. Um, that nature isn't always that spectacular, amazing, wonderful, the reds and the yellows of, of that tree that I spotted first. Um, but there's there's the browns, the, the, the more humble, um, the more ordinary. Um, and yet this lime tree, um, which has its very ordinary autumn colours, is a really important habitat. Um, it's, it, it has a, a, a significant role to play. Um, in um, in God's economy, um, it's an important habitat. Bees like the flowers. Beekeepers like to have a lime around because bee honey is uh, is particularly treasured. Um, every variety has its place. The special ones, the spectacular ones, the ordinary. Um, and at a different time of year, it's awesome here at the moment. But at a different time of the year, I like to look at the um, the leaves that are unfurling, um, and it might be stinging nettles and ferns and nothing particularly rare. But they they do that tight little little um, little curl up um, and and come out from from their from their curls, and it's just just beautiful to watch. But also very ordinary, and you don't have to go very far or, or look for anything particularly special. So the the gift of the ordinary. That I find out there in nature. So what else do I have with me? We have a lot of different trees in um, in the local park around the corner from me. We, we actually put together a tree trail um, in lockdown, lockdown one um, and uh, had to choose which trees to leave out which was a bit sad because they're, they're all of them wonderful. Um, but um, I brought with me some willow. Um, willow is um, cricket bats. Uh, it's it's important, of course, as as it's growing for um, every every species, every insect, and every bird, uh, every butterfly. They all have their favourite species, um, but also in terms of human use, the uh, the willow is uh, is a favourite for cricket bats. So I also have an apple leaf. There we go. Um, apples. Um, the human the human relationship with apples is is very well known um 
we enjoy our apples. We like our apple pies and apple crumbles um, cider in the West Country here. Um, and um, enjoyed by nature as well. Um, you know, when, when, we, when you see apples on, on the floor, um, apples that have dropped um, and that they've got holes in them because something's eaten them, um, that's not a waste. It just means that humans aren't eating them. Some, somebody else, some, some, some other part of God's creation is getting stuck in and, uh, and getting their sustenance from it. And it's all part of the cycle of life and, and the seasons. So, and another one here I've got, uh, where we go? Um, there we go. This is, um, it's got, got all curled up, so we can't see it very well, but that one's a, a beech leaf. Um, so the beech nuts are a, a, a good, good winter f fuel for nature um, at a time of year when other things are perhaps rather more, more scarce. So I also brought with me a few oak leaves. Um, so that's our classic English oak um, and a uh, very long lived variety, very special. We, we, we love our oak trees. Um, also, when we, when we were making our, our tree trail, um, I went for a walk around the community with um, the tree officer, the council tree officer, um, and he was telling me about some of the trees. So, um, so he told me about this, this Turkish oak tree. Um, so that, 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 there we go, Turkish oak leaf. And uh, apparently a few hundred years ago, when oaks were being felled for shipbuilding, um, there was a, a, a season when they were planting Turkish oaks because they're faster growing. Um, and so they thought this would be a really good source of wood. Uh, we wouldn't have to wait quite so long as you do for, for an oak tree. You'd get your wood much quicker. Um, and yet it was discovered that the wood is of a less high quality. So um, you, you, you kind of learn from that, the, the, the wisdom of waiting um, and that sometimes good things need to be waited for. We can't hurry things. We need to take our time um, and trust in God and trust in the spirit and let things take their, their own time. You know, we, 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 we do a thing because we think it'll happen faster and, 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 and faster is always better, but actually sometimes slower is better. Um, except when we're in an environmental crisis, of course, and, and actually we've got to do some stuff pretty fast um, at the moment. Um, so um, I, I, I find myself reflecting on, on this, the, that, that, that need to be fast and slow at the same time um, and, um, and finding God's way, um, God's, God's wisdom sometimes takes, takes time to, to hear and to capture um, and, and to do in, in relationship with others. Um, and yet it's got to be pretty fast. So somehow we need to, to, to get into a, a mindset where we're, you know, they're patting your head and rubbing your tummy thing, where, where you're doing both of those things at the same time. Um, it's kind of tricky, but, but that's where we are at the moment. So I have a couple more things with me. Excuse me, turning to behind me. I've put them a little bit too far behind me. So um, the centre of our faith, of course, is, um, is death and resurrection. Um, and or should I say that the centre of our face of this incarnation? Um, or, it's there's the earthiness of the incarnation where God became human, became part of the physical world, um, and we celebrate that. Um, but death and resurrection, which is lived out um, by nature around us um, on a cycle of the seasons. Um, so here I am in in autumn in the UK, and we're seeing the dying back. Um, and the leaves dropping from the trees and trees looking dead and, and lifeless. Um, but we know with sure and certain hope um, that there will be spring to come, um, even though there's nothing much to see. Um, we, you know, even though all looks dead, we know that spring will come. And so too, we trust in God that, um, that God brings, brings life out of death. That, that, is, our, that is our God. Um, I brought with with me this um this little twig. I'm going to do it, do it that way around um, and see if I can get on camera. I'm not going to get it working uh, quite in in focus. That you might be able to see the buds just at the end of the twig there. Um, so that is actually next season's life that's being held on that very dead looking twig. Um, so the next season's 
new life and new leaves the 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 tiny little bud is there and it's just going to be dormant and waiting until the time is right when it will have its time and will burst from forth from the tomb um and come come you know the the new life of the spring will will be upon us um and the the the, the, the leaves and that 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 bright spring green um that uh, that we see so um you know na nature's living out the story of our faith um so so that that sense of of being able to 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 learn from God's creation. Um, all creation speaks of the glory of God and all creation speaks the story of death and resurrection in so, so many ways. And I brought with me some seeds whilst I was talking of seeds. Um, the, uh, I have a pine cone here um, and yeah, where we go, that's, that's a, a sycamore, sycamore seed. Um, and when I was out on my walk, I found myself reflecting on different trees and different seeds, um, and uh, and how 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 different the seeds need to be for different things. Um, and that's you know that's true in our our life and our ministry, as well. Dif different seeds needed for different initiatives, different things. Um, and sometimes the seed will become a tree. Um, and sometimes the seed will be eaten by one of God's creatures and will serve a different purpose from perhaps what we might have intended it to to serve. Um, and that's good too. Um, God uses um, uses everything in and God God brings good uh, from from all things that, that happen. So uh, so the seeds of new life which need to die um, in order to bear fruit, uh, which again, as, as Jesus said, um, and as Jesus lived um, and as nature around us lives. So I see that I've gone slightly over time, just gone gone half past um, eight. So I need to be drawing to an end there. Um, so thank you for joining us. I'll, I've, um, I've seen that various things popping up in chat um, and have not allowed myself to get too distracted. I'd have gone way off topic, but I will have a read through um, afterwards. So, so thank you for your comments. Um, I think just to say in conclusion, do look out for some resources coming from Messy Church in 2022 uh, to help us collect, connect with God in nature. That is coming. Uh, it's been piloted at the moment. We're, we're actively working on that and that will be on its way um, next year. Um, and also in the meantime, just get yourself outdoors if you can. Uh, I suspect that all, many of you already do that, but um, but kind of um, make it make it a prayer um, and uh, and invite God in, invite God to speak um, and see where that takes you. So thank you for, for joining me this evening. Really good to have you with us. Um, really good to see the, the kind of the, the international community um, that gathers around Messy Church and uh, um, enjoy your day, um, your evening, uh, your afternoon, well, whatever comes next for you, wherever you are in, in the world. So, so thank you all. Um, go well and every blessing.